Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey everyone, and thank you for joining me as we break down the following standard. Today's standard is MA.4.FR.1.4, and the standard says to plot, order, and compare fractions, including mixed numbers and fractions with different numerators and different denominators. So let's go through that again. Plotting, that means to place a point on a number line. Ordering means to put them in first, second, and third. It might go from ascending order from least to greatest or descending order, greatest to least. We'll also have to compare using our symbols right there. Um, it includes mixed numbers. Mixed numbers have a whole number and a fraction. And fractions greater than one can be like this, where our numerator, seven, is greater than our denominator, two. So seven halves. Here's an example. It says that one and two thirds is greater than one and one fourth, because we're gonna take those fractions, because two thirds is greater than one half, a benchmark fraction. And one half is greater than one fourth. So understanding that two thirds goes past a half and one fourth comes before the half, students can then use those benchmark fractions, we call them, in order to compare those numbers. So here I just put using benchmark fractions. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I have created. This is something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public and in these breaking down the best episodes, I'm just showing you my process for breaking down the standards in order to create the resources for you that are strategically aligned to this standard. So we'll spend about half of the video breaking it down, understanding what the expectations are, and then we'll hop over to the website where I can show you all the resources that you'll have access to with your taking on the best membership, okay? All right, let's get back to the benchmark clarifications. It says that we will be using appropriately scaled number lines and using reasoning about their size. One thing that I love is that we're including the use of benchmark quantities, like I just mentioned previously, such as zero, one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one. Really focusing on the one fourth, one half, and three fourths in between those two whole numbers. When students understand those benchmark fractions, they can begin to think about the other fractions and how they're related to those benchmark fractions. And I put that I love this because we include a lot of practice of this. Denominators are limited to halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighths, tenths, twelfths, sixteenths, and hundredths. And you might be asking why hundredths? Well, that's because there's a lot of use between the tenths and the hundredths in our fourth grade standards. And we also will be using these symbols right there, okay? Um, some related benchmarks would be MA.4.M.1.1, measuring length and liquid volume and temperature. This definitely comes into play because when we get to that standard, it does incorporate fractional use, so that'll be good. We also have this data analysis and probability where we're representing data for 1.1, and 1.2 is practicing with mode, median, and range. Where are they coming from in third grade? Well, we have MA.3.FR.2.1, plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions. These fractions in third grade contain the same numerator or the same denominator. And this is the difference in fourth grade is that we're shaking that up. No more of the same, I mean, it might have the same numerator and denominator, but we can make it different this year. It's really focusing on those benchmark fractions. And then in fifth grade, we have MA.5.NSO.1.4, where we're plotting, ordering, comparing numbers with decimals. 
All right, now let's break it down in the purpose and instructional strategy section, and I will point out what jumped out at me. It says, the purpose of this benchmark is to understand the relative size of fractions. We've had practice with fractions, and now it's time to start thinking about the relative size of these fractions. Students will plot fractions on the appropriate scaled number line and compare fractions using those relational symbols, and then we'll order them. So plot, order, and comparing fractions going from greatest to least or least to greatest. Again, descending order goes from greatest to least. Ascending order goes from least to greatest. In my opinion, I would have students be aware of both, being able to, to see the relationship between descending and greatest to least and ascending least to greatest. It says that students, instruction may include helping students extend understanding beyond ge generating equivalent fractions. So um, in the video lessons, we do point out equivalent fractions in this. It's helpful to say, okay, well, I know that three six or five tenths is equivalent to one half. So that means six tenths must be over the halfway mark. So we're extending our understanding with that. We're using that understanding we had and applying it to this setting as well. We'll be using benchmark fractions and estimates to reason the size. For instance, students can compare that three fifths, compare three fifths to one half by recognizing that three in the numerator is more than half of five, the denominator. So they can reason that three fifths is greater, slightly greater, than one half. This is a great way, um, just an example of a benchmark fraction, think aloud right there. So I just made that little note. Some common misconceptions, it says that students may mistake the fraction with a larger numerator and denominator as the larger fraction, or students incorrectly judge that a mixed number like one and three fourths is always greater than an improper fraction, which is interesting to see improper fraction because they've since Common Core been shaking it up and just saying fraction greater than one, but improper fraction is what we used to refer to those as, where the numerator is greater than the denominator. Because students see that whole number in front, they think it's automatically greater, but in this case, that's not the case, right? Because 17 fourths would be greater than four wholes, where one and three fourths only has is greater than one whole. Here's an example of an instructional task. It says to use the benchmark fractions and the number line to compare 12 fifths, a fraction greater than one, and two and seven eighths, a mixed number. So here, breaking it into um, those benchmark fractions, we can say that 12 fifths is like, if we decomposed it, we could say that that would be five fifths plus five fifths plus two fifths, which equals the mixed number of two and two fifths, which would go right about there, where two and seven eighths is much closer to three. So we can quickly reason using those benchmark fractions, using what we know about decomposing fractions to help us justify those comparisons. And here we have a real world problem over here where we have a um, fraction of water that's left and having to figure out who has the least amount remaining. So being able to take these amounts throw them on a number line using our benchmark fractions right there to kind of plot and estimate-ish where those fractions would be and determine who had the least amount of water remaining. That's the standard that we're working with today. Breaking it down, seeing it in action. Let's go ahead and see what you have access to with your Taking on the Best membership. So here we are at the website, mccarthymathacademy.com. We're just going to click on Members Enter here. Select Taking on the Best. We are exploring fourth grade today and the strand, the fraction strand right there. Scrolling down to plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions, 1.4. So the first page to open up will be your bronze resource page, which contains video lessons and printable student guides. So you can see the video lessons available here are using benchmark fractions, introducing them and starting to use them. Plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions that are less than one which means the next one is going to be plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions that are greater than one. And here's the printable guides right there. Now the whole point with these video lessons is to make it fun and to make it click. We want students to walk away from this going, okay, where it's, it makes sense what's happening, but we're, I'm not expecting that they are going to master the skill just from watching the video, which is why we have the silver resources too for students to apply what they've learned in the video 
to a similar setting, to similar types of problems. So if we go on silver, right here, you can go back to those video lessons at any time. Silver resources, we're gonna click right here for the printables. Okay, and now we have the video lessons and the extra practice, video lesson, extra practice, video lesson, extra practice, and a few other activities at the end. So this is the first video lesson using benchmark fractions. So it says here, these are the, the bronze video lessons, by the way. It says use the benchmark fractions to compare the fractions using the symbols and then justify your comparison in words. So you can watch those video lessons if you need help understanding how to do that. But here we're using comparing two thirds and one fourth. You can see the difference here. We, don't, we do not have the same numerators or denominators like we did in third grade. This time they're different. Okay, same kind of thing here. All fractions less than one are using benchmark fractions. Okay, so you can see that we've appropriately scaled the number lines for this. But then when we get to the second video lesson, now we just have this number line and we have to create our own benchmark fractions and justify where to plot these points. We're going to plot each fraction, order them from least to greatest. So that's ascending order, you see right here and complete the comparison statements with the correct symbol. You'll notice right here, we're just comparing two fractions, but then the second line has us comparing all three fractions. And that video lesson walks them through how to do that. Here we're plotting each fraction from greatest to least this time, so going in descending order, and then completing the comparison statements over there. Once they watch that video lesson, then they can use their notes to help them with this extra practice page. And then for this video lesson, it's plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions that are greater than one. So we've got mixed numbers here. We have fractions greater than one right there. Um, a number line provided with the holes, but still students should, uh, in these video lessons, will be taught how to use those benchmark fractions to help compare. After they watch it in the video lesson, then they'll have the extra practice page to try it on their own. Then we have two more activities. So we have the math mission, that's this right here, plotting, ordering, and comparing fractions. This says Kamari tracks his running distances over the course of the week in the table below. Plot Kamari's running distances on the lines below. So taking all of these and then plotting them. Which day did he run the furthest distance? Which day did he run the shortest distance? So we're seeing the standard in action, providing more responsibility for the student and increasing the level of thinking. Part three says the following week, Kamari wants to run even farther than his greatest distance. What would be a possible goal for him to set? All right, and then finally, the last task for the silver membership is the math misconception mystery. This is where, which, and this is a video lesson. So if you go back to that silver page, you just click play right there and I will walk your students and you through the whole thing. I'll say, okay, here's your problem. Go ahead and solve it on your own. So it says, plot the fractions on the number line, then order the fractions from greatest to least. And then students will, after they solve the problem on their own, students will watch as four characters also solve that same problem. Three of those characters will make a mistake and only one of them will solve it correctly. Those characters, of course, are just me dressed up in silly costumes with silly accents and having fun with it. Once you start these math misconception mysteries, your students are going to beg you for more, so be careful. After they watch all of the characters solve, students will then be able to state who the most reasonable answer belongs to and evaluate the work of the other three. This is awesome for friendly debates, for math discourse, to get your students talking and thinking and analyzing those errors. So that is the silver plan. And then finally, we have the gold plan here. You can go back to those bronze resources or silver res resources at any time, but with the gold plan, you also have a mini assessment just for this standard, well, for all the standards, but targeted just for the standard. So you can see the variety of question types. We're also showcasing that numeral word form, um, plotting, ordering. You can see it's all about that a real world setting right there um, and an error analysis. So if you have a, if you get your data back and you see that you have a student struggling with this standard, now you have video lessons, you have extra practice and you have another way to reassess them and see if, if they have it correct. Here's the answer key for that. 
This is where you're breaking down the best episode is located. That's what you're watching right here. There's one for every standard and it's a perk with the gold membership that you have access to them right there with all of your resources. Now these breaking down the best episodes for teachers are also available on YouTube, but it does come with ads. So it's a nice little perk of being a gold member. However, the main reason that members usually go for the gold resources is because they want access to McCarthy Math 155. This is a daily math intervention that I created that was used and aligned with the common core standards. Now we have the best standards and you've probably noticed in exploring a little bit with the best standards that there are a lot of similarities. So there's a lot of video lessons and resources here that still apply, that still trickle over into the best standards. So for instance, let's go ahead and click there. And by the way, the 155, that stands for 155 video lessons for each grade level. So when we click on fourth grade, and scroll down, you can see all these units that maybe you need to pull out some extra practice because your students haven't mastered these skills. Now adding and subtracting numbers with adding and regrouping and word problems, you have eight video lessons to support them with that. But let's get down to um, right here, fraction equivalents and comparisons. With the best standard, there's a lot more plotting on a number line where it wasn't really called for with the common core standard. So we have comparing fractions using area models and equivalent fractions so they can understand what's happening. But that's why taking on the best was created to really nail that standard and not just give you resources that were gonna kind of sort of support you. But if you do need help, if your students do need help in just understanding equivalent fractions or just comparing fractions, this is a great resource to support them with in addition to your taking on the best resources. Okay. All right, everybody. I think that is it for today. I hope that you found this video to be helpful. Now you understand the standard, you understand what it looks like in action, and you know what you have access to with your taking on the best membership. Before we go, let me remind you that what you wake up and you do every day with your life, it really does matter. Thank you so much for all you do for stepping into the best version of yourself every day to inspire your students to do the same. And thank you for inviting me into your educational space. I love what I get to do. I love supporting you and I love helping your students too. So thank you for that. I know you're busy, so I'll see you in an episode real soon. All right. Bye. Okay. So I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Okay. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best of my ability. All right, for real now. Bye.